All right, guys, how's it going? Welcome back. Well, in case you hadn't picked up the many subtle hints in my previous videos, I'm a big fan of the Range Rover. I know what you're thinking. Wow, Matt, that's incredible how you've kept a lid in it for all these years. Well, what can I say? I just like to keep my opinions to myself, don't I? Anyway, yesterday I was offered a 2012 Range Rover Westminster for just £6,000. £6,000. Can anybody guess what happened next? Can you? I bought it. How could I not buy a 2012 4.4 litre turbo diesel V8 Range Rover Westminster for six grand? The last time I bought one of these cars, that was a 2012 Westminster, and I paid £12,500 for it, and I thought that was cheap. So six grand really is the bargain of the century. But, and this is a big but, it's cheap for a reason. I've not seen it yet, but it's been described to me as wanting quite a bit of TLC. There's a broken light, it needs quite a bit of paintwork, the wheels need refurbing, it wants a couple of tyres, it's overdue a service. <laughs> Ran out of fingers there, haven't I? So there's quite a bit to be getting on with. Still for six grand, how could I resist? What I'm thinking is straight away, plough 2,000 pounds into it, so it'll owe me eight, and then it should be worth 10, 11, maybe even 12, who knows? One thing I need to do though is keep my sensible head on, otherwise these costs could just run away with themselves. And I don't want that to happen because at the end of the day, I need to make some profit. Otherwise, there's no business. Right, well let's go and have a look, shall we? I'm excited for this one. Right, well we're here, and so far so good. It looks like an awful lot of car, that for six grand. It's in Santorini Metallic, as they probably all were. Not that long ago, that was a very desirable car. I mean, it still is, isn't it, if you're a Land Rover lover? Let's learn a little bit more about this car than by doing a vehicle history check. So, as always, I'm going to go to carvertical.com, type in the vehicle reg, which is Papa X-Ray 12, Foxtrot Bravo Charlie. This checks databases to see if it's stolen, had its mileage rolled back, ever been involved in any accidents, tells us the ownership, all that sort of stuff. And it's really useful. You should always do this before you buy a car. Usually here in the UK, if the second letter of the registration number is an X, that tends to mean that it's had a private registration from you. So this report will tell us. I've just noticed it's got deployable side steps, which is a really good option, but they're stuck out. I'd almost rather they didn't have them, to be honest. If that's gonna to be too much of an issue, I'm just gonna to have to take them off. I can't be bothered repairing or replacing deployable side steps. Right, and the check is back. So the mileage is genuine. It's never been stolen never been involved in any accidents and there's no outstanding finance on it so we are clear on all fronts it was manufactured in january 2012 first registered in uh, april may 2012 it changed owners in november 2014 i told you i told you i told you the first plate that was ever on it was saw784 so it was issued then with px12 fbc in 2015 in 2015, it had its first MOT, and they've advised brake pipes slightly corroded. That just should not happen, should it, on a three-year-old car? Let's see if there's any MOT on it then. The last MOT was done in April this year, and it had two advisory items. Rear shock absorbers has slight missing of oil, and brake pipe corroded. Okay, right. The mileage, I think, is 120 odd. No, 130. The last MOT had done 134,000 miles. Which, for a 10-year-old car, it's not too bad, is that? 13,000 miles a year, it's about what I do, I suppose. So there's nothing there that's too untoward, really. Look at this, the approximate market value of this car is 11,500. Or, if the seller's a company, it suggests that it could be worth 13,800. I think I'm on the right side of this. It just worries me when I see it there with its side step stuck out, and it obviously needs paint down the driver's side, because that's a bit of a mess. It worries me that... I could be into thousands. And also I've noticed the plates on it are BCA Brighouse. Now, I don't like to see BCA plates on a car, to be honest. I just think it stinks of neglect. I'll tell you something else you can do. If you've got a Land Rover and you want to track down the service history, if you go to osh.landrover.com, type in the VIN, it'll tell us more about this car's history. So let's get the VIN number. Isn't technology good when it works? So, there we go. It's a 2012 L322. We knew that already. Its last recorded service was at 96,000 miles, or 95,286 miles in 2017, at a place called Green Oval Garage in Leeds. And it had an oil, oil filter, pollen filter, air filter, and a pre-summer check. 
So if we check the service history, hmm, that's not great, is it? Unless it changed to, yeah, that could be true. I'm just thinking now, when that car was new, it wouldn't have had digital service history. It would have had the old fashioned stamped book. Then latterly it would have changed. So 2016 it had a service at 77, then 2017 it had a service at 95, both at Green Oval. It is Santorini Black. I know my onions, don't I? Um, right. Well, we are armed with all that knowledge then. Let's go and have a wander around it. Okay. Well, from afar, it looks good. Well, I say good, it looks okay. Straight away, I don't know whether you can see this on the camera, but we've got some damage down this driver's door. There's a dent here, there's a crease there, another dent there, and it's left this scrape all the way along the side of it. It goes into the rear door where there's another dent, but you know, it hasn't broken the paint. I wonder if, with a good buff, these marks should come out because they're not very deep. And if we could get the, the guys in from the Dentmaster company, they might be able to pop those out. That would save me probably 500 pounds worth of paintwork. I just know it's always tricky to pop dents out when they're so close to the edge of the door because they're often strengthening pieces on the back of the, uh, the panel there so that might be a challenge but it's worth a try. Someone's painted the door handles. Someone's painted this mirror as well because that's all kind of orange peel effect. There's a mark here on the wing but again that should buff out. It actually looks a lot worse than it is in reality. I think for a 10 year old car if that could be improved, that would be good enough. We've got the deployable side steps, which are stuck out, which worries me a tad. And on the front, tyre-wise, right, we've got a wheel that wants refurb in here. The tyre is an Accelera, made in Indonesia, and it looks quite old, actually. It's probably on four or five mil of tread. Right, 2018, that tyre then, so it's four years old. They should be the same on each axle. So, on the back we've got a Continental Cross Contact, and that's a decent tyre. That's again on four or five mil. And the age of that one, if I can see it. No, that can't be right, surely not. 2012? Definitely not, that can't be a 10 year old tyre. Hmm. Maybe I've got that wrong. We've got a little bit of rust here on the back of the rear quarter, which is quite common on an L322. And yeah, dented side. Moving around the back, we've got a smashed light lens. Can't see that being cheap, can you? And also it's missing its reflector. It should have a red reflector. Can you see that side? But then this side it's missing. Yeah. Okay, it's desperately in need of some new plates. That back one, I'm surprised it passed an MOT. You can barely read it. They always rust around this top of the tailgate. It's just ever so slightly starting to go, but it's not too bad that really. Not bad at all. The wiper's not broken, or it's not hanging down at least. Moving around this side then, we've got, oh, that's not good. We've got a Pirelli on this side, so the tyres don't match. That looks old. This car straight away has been run on a shoestring. 2015 this tyre, and it needs refurbing. So we've got odd tyres. There's a little spot of rust there, another scrape there, another little mark there. What a pity this hasn't been loved, this car at all. Another mark there. Another side step that's stuck out. And well, at least we've got matching tyres on the front. Another Accelera with a big chunk out of the sidewall there. That's a 2019. You just, you can't run a car like this on a shoestring because you're asking for trouble. So straight away it needs four tyres, there's a grand. Wheel refurbs, that's 200 quid. Hmm. Now, it's done 134, so I would expect it to be covered in stone chips. But it's not too bad, actually. 
another mark there and it's kind of cracked the paint there but that I think I could be quite I'd, I'd be quite happy with that if that would buff out and kind of touched in and re refit the front bumper properly and the washers there on the headlamp shouldn't they have some kind of they look like something's missing right let's have a look inside then well it's quite clean inside it's got the nice light interior which isn't too bad the bolster's not all worn nice rubber mats that's not all abused wants a good clean but nothing too bad i think it's got front tints on the front windows which i don't like so i'm gonna have to peel that off how are the rear arches it's nice and clean in the back very clean the headline is not sagging little bit of rust here on the uh, on the wheel arches but not too bad for a car of this age just wants a very good clean I'm quite pleased now that it's come to me because what on earth like a crime scene this you don't like to find duct tape in a sheet in the back of a car that you just bought We've got a load liner in the back, genuine. Locking wheel nut, mm, just wants a good clean. With the Pirelli. Some signs of rust, but nothing major. The unmistakable sound of an L322. This wheel arch then is yeah same as the other side really probably caught that just in time i suppose and then oh ah right the rear view mirror's fallen down and it's there along with the the cover for it that needs sorting out then doesn't it well i can now see why this was cheap whole result look at that They're the best. Once upon a time, I'd have eaten that. Not anymore. Right. Green oval, that ties up with the service history then. Try not to show you the customer's details. Right, somebody spent a thousand and one thousand two hundred pounds there on brakes. Okay. Seems expensive. Another four hundred pounds there on a service. Okay. Is there any early service history then? Early service history. We've got those last two, haven't we? But is there anything prior to that? Yep, so there we go. That plate was on it from new, SAW. Supplied by Guy Simon Wakefield. Barnsley Road, Wakefield. Right. We've got some then here, haven't we? All oh, right, a bit more than I thought. So, first one was done at 15,000 miles, 2013. Then again, God, he did a lot of miles, didn't he, or she? Then 30,000 miles, same year, about seven months later. Then another one at 46. It's been done every 15,000 miles by Land Rover, up to a certain point. This is what always happens with Land Rovers. Then it changes hands and they become less valuable and then people don't look after them properly. Another one at 61, then 77, then 95, and then nada. And it's now done 134. So that's 40,000 miles without a service, which is not good, is it? They're kind of aging well, though, these, aren't they? They're not as luxurious as an L405, but they're still very nice. So look under the bonnet. CD changer, remember those? Actually, let's have a look what they were listening to. What have we got here? Do 
deleted it, I don't know who that is. Bit of Neil Diamond. So that's my dad. What else? Now 67, now we're talking. Bit of garbage pop. Floor fillers. Oh, I'll tell you what. Between this and the caramel egg, I'm glad I bought this. What's the last one? Rick Astley. Never going to give you up. Uh, right, sorry, I was just thinking to myself there, how much is this going to cost me? Now, I think this engine's great, the 4.4 litre turbo diesel V8, but they do suffer with oil leaks around the turbos and that you could be into two, three, four thousand pounds to sort that out. Well, it's very dirty under here, as I imagined. It's so tightly packed, I can't see anything, to be honest. can't see any obvious leaks but then I'm just kidding myself there really because I can't see anything at all it's missing the covers there I should have a cover there so that leaves and stuff can't get into areas that it shouldn't okay right that doesn't tell me anything really I think on this occasion the proof is in the pudding. I think we need to drive it. Let's fire up then. Oh, we've got the two the split screen here. That's a good option. Sorry, Rita. It's quite a warm day. Let's see if the aircon works then. I doubt it does, to be honest, because the way it's been looked after, I don't think it's been lavished with money. Tesco club card. Has it ever been smoked in? Oh, no, never. That's good. Ticket here from Bolton Council. Well, it's actually in not bad condition inside. That works. I've got no warning lights on at all. Quarter tank of diesel. The air conditioning works. Never seen that before. There's a button there, I think, for the de deployable side steps. I'm not touching the sunroof because a dent. Windows. That all works fine. Suspension. Are we going up? We are. We have lift off. Is there a thud when we select drive? No, there isn't. Handbrake works. Well, this isn't so bad, actually. Right, what have we got to do then? I'll give it a full engine service, a gearbox service, Four new tyres, I suppose, that's going to be expensive. Wheel refurbs, paint work. Try and get the dents out before I do the paint. New rear light lens. Straight away then, off the top of my head, we're into two and a half grand. That's the trouble with these cars, they're just expensive to maintain. And then when they reach a certain value, people... Lost Rick Astley there. People don't maintain them, that's the problem. And we're going to open the gate. Oh, my steps have gone back in. And out again. Well, I'm impressed the air conditioning works, because I really didn't think that would. Let's see how she drives then. See if it's all loose and knocky over bumps. Doesn't seem to be, straight away. Well, straight away it pulls well. It's not smoking excessively. 
I like to think, I like to pretend it has been serviced, it just lost the receipts, but being a bit optimistic there, I think. Brakes are fine. Seems a bit sluggish compared to my five litre petrol, but then a bit they are, I suppose. It's a bit weird driving without a rear view mirror. Gearbox kicks down fine. It actually drives very well. I've driven enough of these to know after 200 meters whether it's all right or not, and I think it's all right. Ah, the start-stop button isn't all abused. Usually they're the first things to give. No, it's quite pleasant to drive, actually. Quite pleasant. Wait. So many idiots on the road, you know. Right, well, I don't really want to drive this much further without checking it over first. I don't want to do it any more damage. So I think you'll have to catch up with me in, I always say a day or two, but it's always months. So I don't know when, but at some point in the future, I'll finish this video off when it's all sorted. So yeah, catch up with you in the future. I'll leave it open. Well, the Westminster is all done. And I'm really happy with how it's turned out. It did take quite a bit longer than I anticipated and it did cost me a little bit more than I was expecting, but I think it's worth it. I'm really pleased with myself for saving this one because I've taken quite a scruffy example and turned it into something which anybody would be proud of. I'd happily have this on my driveway. In fact, I've really enjoyed using it. There's just something really charming about a late L322. The whole car just feels softer than the L405. Even down to things like the seats and the steering wheel, everything's just a bit more worn in. I mean, it could be because this one's done 135,000 miles, but I think that's the case in general. It's a bit like relaxing into your old settee. From the minute you get in this, you just feel at ease, and your shoulders droop. I posted a photograph of this today on my Instagram, along with the caption, old money or no money. And this is just one of those cars. You could visualize this in a car park outside a council tower block with graffiti on the wall, or parked outside a stately home. It just looks right in every setting, especially now this one's fixed, because you never know it was a 10 year old car. In fact, the L322 design's actually 20 years old. You'd never know though, would you? I also love the physical buttons you got on the steering wheel. They're much quicker to respond than the touchscreen things on my L405. Anyway, enough rabbiting on. Let me tell you what I've done to get this L322 in this condition. Firstly, I took it down to my mechanics for a full engine service, an MOT. And as is often the case with an older high mileage car, they picked up on a few more issues which I wasn't aware of. While it was down there, I ordered four Pirelli Scorpion tyres because I didn't want to put cheap tyres on a Range Rover. Just think it looks naff. I also replaced the wiper blades and I found a replacement tail light on eBay for £200, so I ordered that. If you remember, the old one was smashed. My mechanics found that some of the brake lines were corroded, so some of those have been replaced. And there was also an issue with the side steps. Sometimes they'd work and sometimes they wouldn't. Sometimes they wouldn't fold out, sometimes they wouldn't fold back in. So I decided to just remove them altogether. You might disagree with me here, but I'm not a big fan of deployable side steps anyway. They're a little bit, they just make you look like a show off. I had them on my L405 and at first they were a bit of a novelty. I thought they were quite cool. But then when the novelty wore off, every time I got out of the car and put my foot on the side step, I just felt like, like Lord Farquhar. I just felt like I was showing off unnecessarily. So I just removed them altogether. Couldn't be bothered going down that rabbit hole of misery. I also think as a design, it looks a whole lot cleaner without them. I ordered some new reg plates for it from Harrods with my own logo on. I didn't like the old BCA plates. I mean, they were all faded anyway and wouldn't have passed an MOT, but I just think with BCA on the bottom, it just looks like it's been run on a shoestring. Something I always do with Range Rovers is replace the rear plate with a full-sized one. You've got a big space there for a plate and I think it just looks better when you fill that whole space. That might just be me though, it's a bit of a personal thing that. I had to stop for some fuel with this, which is no surprise because it's a 4.4 litre V8. And when I was filling up, I discovered that the original fuel filler cap was missing and somebody replaced it with one of those one size fits all things where you twist it and it kind of opens out. It just looks and feels really cheap, so I ordered a genuine one from Land Rover. I'm sad with details like that, but now there's a brand new fuel filler cap there and it just looks much better. While it was still down at my mechanics, I arranged for the windscreen man to come out and reattach the rear view mirror. I thought if I try and do it, every time I go over a bump, it'll just drop off. After it was done there and it was serviced and MOT'd, I took it to the gearbox place for a gearbox service. This is something that I always preach, but I don't think it had ever been done on this. And of course it had done 135,000 miles. So my mate down at the gearbox sensor has replaced the fluid, the filter and the sump. And I think it just gives you a bit of peace of mind. It wasn't faulted before, but a bit of prevention is always better than the cure. 
too many manufacturers say that they're sealed for life and that's just complete nonsense. It's still a serviceable item and it needs to be done. At that point I'd already spent a couple of thousand pounds because nothing on these cars are cheap but it was time to paint it. So I took it down to the body shop and Jimmy has done an excellent job once again. I was hoping I could pop the dents out on the driver's door and then buff it back, but that was a bit optimistic. So, doing a bit of Ford in here. So it had to be filled and then repainted. In addition to that, Jimmy painted the front bumper corner and gave the whole car a buff. And now you would never know it was 10 years old. I'm just looking out now over the long bonnet. You can see the little water droplets just dripping off in beads something really satisfying about that. The last job then was to take it to Tameside Valentin and leave it there for a full detailed clean and they've done a really good job. It wasn't horrendously dirty before but it did need a good clean. I also asked them to remove the horrible chavtastic front window tint which they've done and now it looks so much better, so much cleaner and it's much lighter inside because of it. I don't know why people tint the front windows, it just looks really cheap. One thing I didn't bother doing was refurbishing the wheels, they're not that bad. And at that point, I'd already spent thousands of pounds on it and I thought it was just a waste of money. I've got to still try and make some profit out of this. By now, you might be thinking, hang on a minute, Matt, you haven't done any of that work yourself, have you? Well, not so fast. Remember how the old wheel sensors were all corroded? I bought a new set off eBay for £10 and guess who fitted them? Me. I think I deserve a special pat on the back there for that one. I'm going to add NVQ Mechanic onto my CV, which some could argue stands for not very qualified. Anyway, let me go through the costs with you. It's quite a long list, so you might want to put the kettle on. Grab yourself a digestive. Right then, I paid £6,000 for the car, which on the face of it sounded like the bargain of the century, didn't it? But, as I'll explain with these costs, not so much. I've got two bills here for my mechanics. I'm not sure why, but the first one was £1,580.51. So it's had 10 litres of oil, a fuel filter, cabin filter, wiper blades, bulbs, a reflector, oh I'd forgotten about that, it was missing a reflector off the back bumper, so I've had a new one of those, that was £32. They fitted the rear lamp for me, they replaced the wheel nuts because they were all rusty, and that's quite a common problem with Land Rovers. With age they start to burst and then you just won't get them off, so they replaced them just in time. The four Pirelli tyres were £720 for the set, they also removed the side steps and then £200 in labour, so that was 13 17 plus VAT, so 15 80 and 51 pence. The second bill at the mechanics was the MOT test fee, that was £40. A fuel cap, that was £41.71. Brake flexi hose and another brake pipe, that was 37 34 and 30 respectively. Some brake fluid and labour, £280. So my total there was £518.86. In addition to that, we've got the £200 on eBay for the rear light lens and the bill at the body shop was £400. Offside front and rear doors, near side front bumper corner, buff polished wax, along with a general clean and touching. £400, I think that's a bargain. On top of that, it was £25 for a set of number plates, £100 for a valet, £10 on wheel centres, £260 on a gearbox service. Let me just add this up then. So That takes my total spend to £3,294.37. Add in the £6,000 I paid for the car, my grand total is £9,294.37. It's an awful lot of car for that sort of money, isn't it? I was half tempted to just keep it and use it over the winter, keep the miles off mine. But I haven't done, I've decided to sell it. So I've currently got it advertised for £12,495. If it sells for that, then I'd get a profit of around £3,000, so it's still definitely worth doing. And to be honest with you, I quite enjoyed the process. The only trouble is, I'm not sure who this is going to attract. Who's going to want to buy a 135,000 mile Westminster like this? I think I'll have to qualify the customers myself on this occasion, and I'm going to have to be brutal. Ring, ring. Hello. Hello. I'm calling about your Range Rover Westminster. Right, before we go any further, do you have £3,000 set aside in a Range Rover rainy day part? Uh, no, I don't. Right, forget it then. I'm going to have to be that brutal. You can't run one of these cars on a shoestring. The last thing I want to do is sell it to somebody who's just come out of a brand new Skoda Kodiak on lease and they've sent it back because they want to reduce the monthly payments. Because the first time an engine light pops on this, they'll just soil themselves and then they'll make my life a misery. So that isn't what I want. I need to sell it to somebody sensible, pragmatic, a lander of a lover. It might sound like I'm being a bit unfair there, but trust me, I've been in this situation many, many times. If you sell the wrong car to the wrong person, then they just make your life a misery. I've said this before in many other Range Rover videos, but if you've only got enough to buy the Range Rover, then forget it, don't buy one. You need to keep some money aside for repairs. 
And as nice as this car is now, I've done all the jobs on it that I would normally do and normally recommend, it's still a 135,000 mile 10 year old Range Rover with one key and patchy service history. What do you expect is going to happen, really? Things will break, you just gotta be prepared for it. I've not seen one of those for years. They are one of the ugliest cars on the road. A Hyundai Matrix. Believe it or not, I think they were designed by Pininfarina. I don't know who within the Pininfarina team designed that. Perhaps the caretaker, or the gardener, or the cleaner. Well, thank you once again for watching. Make sure you give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't done already. You can follow me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. I'll leave the link below. If you've got any comments or questions, let me know below. I'll do my best to get back to you. So yeah, cheers guys. See you next time.